Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to Trinity Saturday evening service. Uh, it's great to see you all here tonight. And to those of you who are worshiping from home, hello to you as well and welcome. Uh, first COVID uh, safety procedures update. Trinity is no longer requiring masks and, and social distancing during worship, though uh, we do ask uh, that you not cluster completely together if you can avoid it. And uh, also the uh, uh, two side seating areas are available if anyone is uncomfortable uh, sitting in the central pews uh, without a mask or around someone that does not have a mask. Okay, uh, we are currently making our way through the annual stewardship drive. And we've already had a pretty good return of cards and we thank those of you who have filled them out for the generous responses we've gotten so far. Uh, everyone should have received a letter and a pledge card in the mail. And uh, in the event that you didn't, you're now aware that we are having a stewardship drive and we are looking for pledges. And we do have uh, pledge cards available at the uh, back of the uh, sanctuary in the north X and at the west exit. Uh, and just as my, my other hat is president of the congregation, I cannot tell you how difficult it is to put together a budget if people do not uh, fill out pledge cards. Because uh, we're guessing that their situation hasn't changed from the year before. And so if, I know some people really don't like filling out pledge cards, it's, it just really, really, really helps us uh, put together our annual budget. So I am pleading with everyone to please take the time to fill one out. Uh, voters meeting. Uh, June 27th, and that again has uh, two uh, major agenda items. One are uh, elections for elders and uh, leadership council, and the other is it is time for the congregation to approve the annual budget. Going back to the pledge cards, it's a lot easier to make sure we have everything done if you can fill out a pledge card. Uh, Okay, uh, lots of ongoing Bible studies and support groups. Details are in the weekly or on the Trinity website. And don't forget to pick up your baby bottles from the Narthex. Uh, this is our annual baby bottle uh, fundraiser for the Redeeming Life Outreach Ministry and Maternity Home in Sanford. And as most of you probably know, you know, that's where uh, uh, Deaconess Liz went when uh, uh, she left Trinity. So, you know, we have always supported that ministry uh, generously, and uh, we encourage you to uh, pick up a baby bottle and uh, uh, participate. Okay. June 26th is the first work day for the new landscaping project. Uh, details will be in the weekly. We also have a display in the North X and a sign-up sheet. So anyone who could be available on the 26th to help get us started, that again would be a great help. Uh, and finally, uh, we're recognizing graduates this weekend. So we ask anyone who is a graduate and sees their name show up up here, or their picture, to uh, give a wave so that everybody can recognize them. And Pastor, that's about it. Lena will be there tomorrow morning. Faith is, is, Faith is here tonight. Faith, where are you? Oh, she's in the back. Come on. If you turn around and wave, Faith just made an appearance. <laughs> Thanks, Faith. Tom, thank you. And congratulations to you and Terry, as well as to Faith and all of our graduates. Uh, we do want to just have just a word of quick welcome to say thank you for your responses as stewards of God's grace, and we are so pleased that that is happening. 
this was a short week this past week and we are seeing response and if you're not yet responded we can receive that yet as Tom said today if you have your ready and you're ready for that you can place it in the offering or send it in the mail God will bless it and he'll bless you uh, please stand and let's uh, do the best part uh, at this time of our service and just we'd like to have you turn and wave to the cameras and David and Julie up there and uh, also hello to everybody at home who's watching by way of the internet we make our beginning this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we begin with a spiritual that we may not have sung before. So I'm going to sing the first verse for you, and uh, then I'll ask you to uh, sing that first verse over again with me. say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. Almighty God, in his own mercy and grace, has given his own Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and eternal God, your son Jesus triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from the bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight's Old Testament reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, beginning with the 8th verse. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, 
I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of a tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Teacher, will you tell me what must I do for eternal life? I kept your laws completely. Sell all you have, give to the poor. Then heaven's treasure shall be yours. How hard for those who are rich on earth to gain the wealth of heaven. Now Jesus sat by the offering gate as people brought their money. The rich they filled the collection plate, the widow gave a penny. Now she's out giving all the rest, her gift was all that she possessed. Not what you give but what you keep is what the king is counting. Teach me, Lord, to walk this road, the road of simple living, to be content with what I own, generous and giving. And when I cling to what I have, please rest it quickly from my grasp. I'd rather lose all things of earth to gain the things of heaven. Teach me, Lord, to walk this road, the road of simple living, to be content with what I own and generous and giving. And when I cling to what I have, please rest it quickly from my grasp. I'd rather lose all things of earth to gain the things of heaven. Tonight's epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning with the 13th verse. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who has raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being rewarded day by day. For the slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. 
For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. This day is recorded in the book of St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. I invite you to read aloud with me the words of our gospel. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again, so they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He's out of his mind. And the scribes came down from Jerusalem and were saying, He's possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he cast out the demons. And he called them and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not stand and if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man. And whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And the crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends the reading of our gospel this day. You may be seated. And our hymn of the day is another spiritual. And it's in our hymn book, but we will sing it just a few verses.
grace, mercy, and peace be richly and abundantly poured out upon you this evening. Our stewardship theme for 2021 is given, it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and poured out. Last week we focused on given, it will be given unto you. Today we'll be going a little bit deeper, focusing on these words from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. They first gave themselves. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Savior Jesus, help us each to discover the true meaning of these words and to look upon the gift you gave us on Calvary's holy cross. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to see the size of the gift you've given us in our salvation and in the daily blessings you give us also for our here and now life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You have heard me say before regarding stewardship that God is not aiming at your checkbook. He's aiming at your heart. I'd like to have you think about that. He's not aiming at your hip. He's aiming at your heart. And a heart that is motivated and is in tune with God is truly a miraculous thing. Today in our text of 2 Corinthians 8, we truly do see a miracle of God's grace. Something spectacular happened in some of the churches that Paul had started. You could say they were baby missions. Not the richest or the wealthiest, but described in our text of today, they were the poorest of the poor. And in fact, they'd suffered a severe affliction. Paul writes, we want you to know about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. And what was going on at this time, there was the Jerusalem church that was really going through devastation, persecution, and being kicked out of the synagogue, their ties, financial and business, and their livelihoods were many times woked, collapsed, defunded. Paul says, for in the severe test of their affliction, these poorest of the poor churches had suffered persecution for their faith. This was about the, their response to God. What they were going to do in order to help in the collection to give to Jerusalem. It highlighted the importance of their God-given faith that he granted them to believe. And how thankful they were to be believers in Jesus. Their abundance of joy, Paul says, and their extreme poverty. Think about that. Bookends on one end of the shelf and the other. Extreme poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity. We truly don't know much about what the difficulties were, what their afflictions were, but we know that Paul describes it as severe. We also know the results that this left these people in and their churches. It had an indescribable, miraculous effect, an excess of joy, while at the same time, an extreme poverty to the depths. One commentator said of this church, these churches, so deep was their poverty that you could not dip it out. It was so deep. And so great was their joy that it poured out in a tide of wealth of generosity. Mathematically, as human beings, God's math a lot of times just doesn't simply add up. What were they to do? They were perhaps the poorest of the poor in the Christian churches perhaps even poorer than the saints in Jerusalem who this collection was being taken up for. 
Yet nowhere in this text do we read of someone who raised their hand in Macedonia standing up and saying, hey, what about us? Why are we giving to them? Shouldn't we be getting a collection taken up for us? No, the Macedonians had a single-mindedness in response to their Savior and the salvation that he'd given them. God's gift of grace was greater than their poverty and their affliction. For they gave, Paul says, according to their means. And I testify, even beyond their means, of their own accord. And then he writes, and they begged us earnestly for the favor of participating in the collection that was being taken up for the relief of the saints in Jerusalem. Our stewardship this weekend will kick off into the second week. And I just want you to know that we're very pleased with the responses, yes, that are coming. But I also want you to know, as we start to look at this, how these Christians looked at their response. And Paul also writes, it wasn't as we had expected from these people, the poorest of the poor, but they first gave themselves to the Lord. And then by the will of God, they served. To those of you who are children here with us, and I see the Schumachers have their tribe here, and some of you may have some others, but if you have some grandkids or children at home, please tell them or have them listen up right now. One of the best ways you can serve is by giving honor to your parents. They are God's parents chosen for you. And one of the nicest things you can do in honoring them is it also honors God. And so I want to just say that to you, that you first give yourselves up to honoring God by honoring them and doing what they want you to do. Glenn, what else is it that you wanted the kids to do this weekend while they're at the house? Well, we want to just say to you, God's blessing to each of us. And God's math didn't seem to add up for these poorest of the poor. It also didn't add up for the widow. You know, the widow who gave her last mite, which is really two copper coins worth less than one penny, one cent. Jesus says of this poor widow who has put in more than all of those who contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything that she had. Mark 12. Her trust was in the Lord. Her belief was that God would provide. She knew that that scent would run out. But she also knew that it was God who had given it to her in the first place. And that he would give her what she needed. This widow placed her trust in God. God's math didn't oh, add up either to the widow of Zarephath. You remember her from Elijah. In the Old Testament, in the book of Kings, Elijah asked for some water from this widow woman and a morsel of bread that she had in her hand. And she turned to him and she said, As sure as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. I am only gathering right now a couple of sticks that I may take this last handful of flour in a jar and little jug of oil that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son and that we may eat this last meal and then die. Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of this flour and bring it to me, and afterward then make something for you and for your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, 
the jar of flour shall not run out, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. For there was a famine at this time that was so severe, the crops were gone. She and her son and Elijah, the Bible tells us, ate many days, and there was always more. More flour and more oil. And the Lord had provided as Elijah had promised. God's math may not seem to add up to you. Not only did God give this woman her daily bread and flour and more oil, he also later would raise up her own son who had fallen sick and died. And Lazarus, at the command of God, prayed for this child and raised him from death to life. My friends, you cannot outgive God. And God really doesn't want your coins or your flour or your oil. He wants our trust. And He wants us to trust in Him to provide for what we really need. He wanted to, them to believe that He was God, their God, and that they were His children, and that He, their Heavenly Father, would always take care of them. It was such a heart, out of such a heart, that the Macedonians gave. They gave from that heart that God seeks for you and for me. The Bible says they first gave themselves. Even before the Macedonians took part in the collection or the widow, went and gave that last penny, or even before the widow would go and cook for Elijah and then trust that there would still be some left over for her and her son. Each of these, out of their poverty, first gave themselves, dedicating their very life, their very existence, They put their very lives in the hand of the Lord God Almighty. My former vicar, Jim Edge, you've heard me talk of him before. He was formerly a metallurgist, someone who tests metals to see how valuable they are, how pure, how strong, how bendable, how they can stretch even, and also how they would hold up under stress. You might say he was a tester of metals. He explained that steel is made stronger, and upon explaining it to me, he said, it's when we take heat and fire up the steel and heat it up to being red hot, and then we take it and dip it in water, and the extreme temperatures strengthen the metal, and then we also hammer that metal, and it becomes forged, and it becomes stronger and stronger until it almost becomes unbreakable. These extremes test afflictions that we've heard from these people were also things that made them stronger. My friends, this past year, 15 months now, COVID, I believe has made us stronger. Some of you are going through some very serious things. Thank God most of us did not contract or come down with COVID, and those of us who did recovered from it. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to say that the Lord provided. And when we start to look at this metallurgy, the testing and fortifying, heat purifying things such as silver and gold, and that through those fires, the metal is actually purified as the the waste, the dredge, is the dross is pulled out. What an example of our faith. The picture of the Macedonians, the picture of the woman who gave her last penny, the one who used her last oil and flour, 
Through their severe afflictions, these Macedonians were made stronger, and the fires of tribulation and afflictions refined their faith, moving the impurities of greed, of selfishness, of worry, and replaced it with a trust in God. It made them, as it makes us, rich in generosity and fortified in our faith. COVID-19 did this in this worldwide pandemic. It ravaged us economically, socially, emotionally, politically, and spiritually. The virus had come upon us, this invisible plague. We were worried about not only our health and all those things, but our, also our jobs and our businesses if we would ever or they would ever bounce back. We too as a church were concerned of how we would make our bills, pay our staff, and to each and everyone listening today, praise be God, we made it by His grace. We survived. And our recent survey that we did as a congregation it revealed to me and to all who saw it. It revealed that we are stronger in our faith this year than we were then at the beginning of the pandemic. Like the metal, like the tests, like the afflictions, we too became stronger in our faith. As Paul spoke to the church of Corinth, I now speak to you, Trinity. Accordingly, Paul said, complete among you the, this act of grace. Complete your pledge. Complete giving with the knowledge of knowing and trusting that God will give it to you out, measured out. Given it will be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together. But first, give yourself. We have much work to do in the coming days and months. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth, and I speak to you now also, but as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love, see that you also excel in this grace of giving as well. And Paul then said, I say this not as a command, but as an opportunity to prove by the earnestness of others your love for your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. For you, like the Macedonians, to give as a response to what God has given to you, to say thank you. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, don't you? That though he was rich for your sake and mine, he became poor. He not only became flesh, was born in a manger in Bethlehem. In 33 years of a young man's life, he became the spotless Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. And there on Calvary's hill, Jesus Christ carried a cross. And there on Calvary's hill, his hands and his feet were nailed and the certificates of sin that were held against you and me, God canceled. And they're gone, they're paid for in the blood of Christ, his own son, our savior. Yes, though Jesus was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty, you and I might become rich. Pouring out his life for ours, he took up his cross and he received a crown of thorns so that we could receive a crown of life and a robe of righteousness. And we will see that we are heirs of heaven. What a wonderful day that will be 
But God has plenty of days left for you and me. But He wants to bless you and me. And God is not only able to save you, He can send you. But He can also help you survive this, these days, this life, and surround you with gifts of His grace every day. And I just want you to know that He's with you as He was with the Macedonians, as He was with the widow who gave her last, as He was with the widow who cooked for Elijah. God is with you, and He will provide. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand and join together as we speak the words of our faith in the Apostles' Creed. With God's people throughout all the ages, let us boldly proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe... The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life get in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam your son Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him we give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of his forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and his blood. Amen. Lord and Savior Jesus, we indeed give you thanks. We give you thanks for the relief from this COVID virus, for the treatments and vaccinations and therapies and for recovery for those who have had it. We thank you and praise your holy name also, Lord, that you've provided for us during this time. 
We ask, O oh Lord, for those who are sick or who are suffering, those who are facing death or who have lost loved ones, that you would comfort them because of your grace and through your grace. Help us as, as your church to envelop them and to minister to their needs. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the prayers that have been answered, for Richard Matthews, the husband of Shirley. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have provided him with a heart. He'd been on a heart donor waiting list for over a month, and your grace and your mercy and your timing, this day, he was given that announcement. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and all who will attend him tomorrow. And may you bring him safely through this surgery. And may you allow him a healthy heart to live and reside in his body. Give his body complete recovery in the days ahead, but allow his eyes of faith ever to be fixed upon you, the author and perfecter of his faith. Be with Gary Bowles, be with Bud Puck, and all who are awaiting your continued healing and blessings. Be with Marty as his hand surgery in the days ahead for recovery. We pray, O oh Lord, for these and all others. And we ask, O oh Lord, your blessing to be upon Trinity Lutheran Church and School. Be with our stewardship drive and provide all that we need to do all that you've called us to do in this place at this time. In Jesus' name, we pray this, and now pray that prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We want to say that now that we have had um, many of the restrictions removed, uh, we are free to come to the altar and along this rail to line up, still standing, and we will commune you. If you wish to remain seated, you can remain seated and there is an option for the little communion kit to be given to you and you will be instructed when to take that. If you wish to have us com bring communion to you and remain seated, make sure the usher is made aware of that. And then we will follow up with that at the end of our distribution part. And may you also be reminded, for those of you who are children, please know that the Lord loves you and that you too are invited to come forward for a blessing. On the same night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. When he had broken it, he gave thanks and he gave it unto his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given unto death for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, in the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped and had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples and he said, Take and drink ye all of it, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is given and is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated.
communion kits. Please open them up. I invite you to open them. And on the smaller end, to tip that over and open it up and to open that up and to receive the bread. As Jesus said, I say now to you, take and eat. This is my body given unto death for you. And as you turn the cup over, the wine that is there, Jesus said, that night in which he was betrayed, take and drink. This is my blood poured out for you for the remission of all your sins and the strengthening of your faith. He says that to each and to every one of us. May God bless us as his children. He loves you. Amen. slide, the dismissal, we invite you to turn actually to the benediction. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. Amen.